everybody. How are you? I hope you're having a great day. I know that I am. Um, and so I just like to say thank you, everybody. There's so much going on. Uh, <laughs> we got Facebook Live over here. Uh, Donovan's YouTube Facebook Live. live. No, no, that's or, oh, that's YouTube, that's YouTube Live. Okay, mm -hmm. well, hey, YouTube. And then ultimately we have a video here that's going to go on YouTube. And then we have the podcast. So hello to everybody. <laughs> How are you? Getting your now, message out. Right. <laughs> What, five, five cameras platforms. and stuff at a time. All right, and so anyway, i also like to say thank you to Donovan, throwing rocks and high in his hands, Sadiq. As always, he makes all of this possible. Uh, he is my co-host partner in crime, uh, here to answer questions and stuff. Or clarify some and, things. And clarify some things, you know, because we're not always right, but we ain't always, always wrong, wrong either. Hey, Didi, how are you? Long time no see. And so we have a lot of topics going on today. Um, I actually asked everybody on my um, Facebook feed or line or whatever you call it, timeline, if they can help me out with some topics because as always, there's a lot of stuff going on and I didn't want to like select one myself. And so as always, you guys delivered. And so I want to get started. I don't see Ben on here yet, so hopefully he'll come in because this is actually his question. Uh, real quick before uh -huh. we even start, I would like to say... And I'm going to show you guys Donovan really quick because you guys always... And don't be afraid when you see me. <laughs> don't be afraid. That's I Donovan see. Sadiq. Uh, quickly be be before we start. Okay. Uh, we are on uh, News from the Edgemont on YouTube because I do not know the password to the Demetra K YouTube channel. <laughs> I know it's Al's gal. I want to talk, talk to <laughs> yeah, say, give, it, give it yeah. out to everybody. everybody why yeah. don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, did I change it? I'm not sure. Okay, well, we'll figure it but out. But next week, we'll be on your YouTube okay, channel. Well, it doesn't yeah. matter where it's at as long as we, we're somewhere. Right. So anyway, like I said, we got a lot to discuss, and this topic actually comes from Ben. Ben Knight, who was a friend of mine on Facebook. Now, he says, okay, when is it going to be okay to off cops like they do us? And he puts disclaimer. These are the thoughts of Ben Knight Jr. and don't <laughs> represent the thoughts of Demetra K. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> hey, Athena. And I'm glad that he said that, you mm -hmm. know, which it is what it is. And so, um, unfortunately, we have seen another unarmed black man get murdered by police officers. Police in Sacramento tonight released new video that shows officers shooting a man to death Sunday night in his grandparents' backyard. The officers say they thought he had a gun. He was holding only a cell phone. Here is John Blackstone. Just broke the window, running south. A sheriff's department helicopter flying over a Sacramento neighborhood spotted a suspect as they responded to reports of a man breaking into cars. Police on the ground wearing body cameras were directed to the house where he was seen. Then a tragedy unfolds. Police round the corner, then quickly retreat. From above, the man appears to turn toward the police. They open fire, believing he has a weapon. Show me your hands, gun, gun, in all, the two police officers fired 20 shots, killing 22-year-old Stephen Clark in the backyard of his grandmother's home. All he had in his hand was a cell phone. He's still down. He's not moving. We can't see the gun. His brother, Stephon De Clark, is calling for justice. They will pay for this. Yeah. He, he, you're going to know his name forever, John. You hear me? You're going to remember, like, like how you know Trayvon Martin, Mike Brown, Eric Garner, Tamir Rice. You're going to know. You're going to know him. You know what I mean? You're going to remember this. Sacramento police released the video under a recent city policy requiring openness. The two officers involved are on paid administrative leave while the shooting is investigated. John Blackstone, CBS News, Sacramento. Stephon Clark was his name. He um, lived in Sacramento, I think it was early last week. He was... Um, shot 20 times by Sacramento police officers as he, hey Cecilia, as he was um, in his grandmother's backyard. They shot him 20 times. I think they said they shot him within three seconds of them approaching, approaching. him. They never even told him who they were. So as far as he's concerned, he's probably running from, I don't know, somebody who's trying to do something to him. Um, and so, and, they, and, uh, real quick, mm -hmm. I cut you off. No, and, no, okay. Uh, people got to understand this. Mm -hmm. He was shot 20 times, and after he was shot, they let him lay there for five let minutes. Let him lay there. Without even, you know, if you're going to shoot somebody, at least render uh, aid. Nope. It's obvious he was not moving. He was not. And then you can hear them saying, are you, are you okay? Are you, <laughs> did you get hit? Or, you know, trying to Sad. converse with him. Like, you he just did. put 20 
bullets in this dude, and now you want to know if he's responding. <laughs> Can he respond to you? Like, what's really going and on And then here? when they did get to him, they handcuffed him, a, a dead man. And then they lied and said um, he had a gun. Okay, <laughs> no, then they thought it was a crowbar. Because somebody was running around the neighborhood breaking in the car. If it was a crowbar, windows. how does that justify you shooting? Agreed, it, it doesn't match. The 20 bullets in the crowbar seems kind of unfair, right? So then ultimately they found out it was his iPhone. Now, from the helicopter footage, um, they could see that he had a cell phone, but for whatever reason, mm -hmm. they weren't corresponding with each other and they just unloaded on, you know, Stephon Clark and the rest is history. Right, well, uh, and also this is a very, very, and these people, their parents are going to get paid. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, other people than us, are saying, well, you didn't see the whole video, he's justified. When you are on your property, the police have no justification to come on there and do what they want to do. How do you justify shooting right. somebody 20 yeah. times? Even if he had a gun in his possession, he's on his property. I mean, how many people, and, and I'm going to go ahead and say how many white people have lived to tell about it after killing mm -hmm. 17 kids at a school? Right. Or, you know, right. a, a Dylan Roof. These people, I mean, yeah. going to Burger King. So right. it's, not, it's not like they don't have a protocol to deal with people. Right. They just choose not to for whatever yeah. reason. But, but I want people to well, We know what the reason is. Yeah, but, but, I, but I want people, especially our people, to understand mm -hmm. when you are on your property, the police do not have a la blanche cart to come on there and do what they want. But do they know that, though? The police? Yeah. They do know it, but because they prey on our ignorance of the law. Well, okay. That's why you'll see some police say, let me see your ID, and people just give it up. You don't have to identify yourself. And I understand that, because I do believe that ignorance of the law mm -hmm. is a thing. However, hey, Tay, mm -hmm. I do believe, because we've seen um, black people, you know, uh, recite the law, or say mm -hmm. this is against the law, and they still end up murdered. Right. So to me, if these cops ran into his backyard without, you know, asking mm -hmm. permission or whatever the protocol yeah. was. They're not supposed to be there. They, they were bent on killing him, sure. regardless of what, yes. if he said, listen, it's against the law yes. for y'all to be here. Yes. He, they were still going to murder him. Right, absolutely. Right. And so, okay, so that's the story of Stephon Clark. So, uh, again, another dead man has been, uh, a dead, um, another black man, unarmed black man has been murdered by the police. And so now I guess, you know, we got to wait to see how it plays out. Now, to uh, continue addressing, and I'm going to get to all you guys' comments, addressing Ben's um, question. He wanted to know, um, when is it okay to start offing police officers like they off us, Okay. So before I answer your question, Ben, I would like to say this, and I'm going to read my notes because I got a lot of them. Dr. Claude Anderson lists in his five things that black folks must do, um, let's see, must do in order to not become extinct is to I'm control, sorry. I mean, but this is yeah, the truth, is to control the, cor the courts and police system. We do that by practicing group economics. Currently, we as black people earn about $1.3 trillion a year but we give 97% of that away to other communities. In addition, we don't vote as we should in local and state elections. Yeah. Now, Glenn Ford um, of the Black is Back Coalition and Black Agenda Report says that black people must control and determine the rules regarding what the police do within our communities. Now, the police must work with and for the people. No commu not community policing because that's still controlled by the police but community control of the police because that is controlled by the people. Now, do you guys remember um, Ferguson, Missouri? Yes, well, Missouri. Two, uh, Missouri, okay. In 2014, Michael Brown was murdered in cold blood by a police officer who was ultimately found not guilty. His name was Darren Wilson. Now, during that time, Ferguson was predominantly a predominantly black city, and it still is, um, that was governed by mostly whites. Um, except for the one black city council member. For a lack of better words, Ferguson was operated like a plantation. Yes. Okay. Now, in 2018, the city manager is black, the police chief is black, and three of the city council members are black. The number of black police officers has more than doubled too. So to say things have returned, so, I mean, I'm sorry, some say that things have returned to normalcy in that black people are not being um, harassed and seen as a source of revenue and racially profiled uh, before the changing of the guards. Now, before that, uh, the, the white police chief was fired because I guess in some emails and correspondence, it came out that they were um, making a lot of racial jokes and of course, comments about the, uh, you know, the black people that live there. And they mm -hmm. also said that the black people there, were, they were joking about it, but serious, were a source of income because the more we harass and ticket them, 
the more money the city makes. Now, mind you, it's mm -hmm. predominantly black. So now that's changed. Right. But, you know, but, you know, how do you, and that's how they keep us in poverty, too, because mm -hmm. how do you keep ticketing uh, poor black people? And we got to pay four dollars a ticket. Whatever. Right. That's money out of our pocket, and we could never uh, move out of our circumstances. That was their hustle, mm -hmm. and so now that's changed because yeah. you know they say things are changing. Uh, and, the, and a black uh, police officer, he's saying, you know, it's obviously going to take some time, take but time. we don't have those issues. People are now just getting pulled over for speeding, or right. you know, the obvious no, yeah, things. the obvious normal stuff. Um, the city manager is also black. Uh, uh, they just had an election. They could have elected their first black mayor, but the um, previous or the, uh, the incumbent, rather, white mayor won. However, the city manager has more power than the mayor. The, yeah. the mayor is the mayor's ceremonial. The, the mayor is ceremonial. Right. It's just like what we have in this city here. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a city manager that runs it. We had a city manager that made more than the president of the United States. Damn. That's where the in power Marino was. Valley? In Marino Valley. Ghetto Valley. Golly. $523,000 <laughs> a year. To do what? Manage the city. Okay. Oh, uh, let me give a quick shout out. Mm -hmm. Today is my big brother's birthday. Hey, happy why, birthday, Smoke. Why is that important? Because statistically, if you're a black man and you make it past the age of 21, you made you it. You made it. You made it. <laughs> so uh, he's okay. done that twice over. So he's 49 years old, a half a century next year. You made and, it. And he made it. So happy birthday. Well, happy birthday! And so the reason, so the reason I said all of that to um, to finish off Ben's question of um, when is it going to be okay for us to start offing police officers the way they off us is never going to be okay. Because and we just know that yeah. it's never going to be okay. Nobody's going to give us a pass and say, "Well, they shot one of you guys. Now you guys go shoot one of them." That's never going to be and, okay. Uh, President Trump has reversed the Obama era of giving military weapons to these local police stations. So now you're going to remember the old Bataram and right. these old tanks. So now the, the local police forces are now authorized to take military equipment to go into your neighborhood and be an occupying force. But we community. knew that was coming, though. Right. We knew that was coming. And so the reason I read all of that about Ferguson, because Ferguson was, like, as I said, a plantation. But... By voting in, I mean, how, how do you have predominantly, I think it was 97% black in mm -hmm. the city. Right. How do you have that many black people and you and have no all white overseers? Mm -hmm. No power. Right. And so what they've done was um, they went to the polls and said, okay, <clears throat> we never want to have a Michael Brown take place again under our watch. We want to be in control of that. And so they changed it around. And so that's what we have to do. We have to start practicing group economics so that we can police our own it's because you figure if another police officer, let's say a white police officer, or another um, race comes in, they're not, not going to know how to deal with us. They're going to be more technical by the book, you know, and, and in some instances, a lot of them say they're scared, you know, because of all the stuff they hear about black people. I so fear for my life. Right. And so their first instinct is to shoot to kill. Right. And, then and why are you a police officer if you're afraid of the very people you're policing? Well, I mean, because it gives them an excuse, you know. Right, to, but that's what a but why become a police officer. It's a license to kill. Yeah. Is what mm -hmm. it is. It's a license to kill. And they know they'll get away with, oh, my God, I fear for my life. Mm -hmm. I saw him reaching for a gun. Say. That's all you got to say. Oh, he didn't have a gun, but I thought right. he had a gun. I mean, the lady, right. uh, Betty, whatever, the white lady, a uh, police sure. officer mm -hmm. that shot the guy in, in broad daylight in, in on a freeway and right. got away with it. Yeah. And then she got rehired but by another police station. What these, uh, these black uh, police officers need to start understanding is, I can't remember the uh, police officer's name. Mm -hmm. uh, I think his last name was, I can't remember his last name, but the black police officer that shot the white lady, um, unarmed white lady. Oh, yeah, yeah. He has been charged with murder. Right. right. Where they do that at? Right. I thought he was a police officer. Blue lives don't matter? Right, right. Okay. Right. right. <laughs> and so I get to you guys' comments. So, Dee Dee, you say hello. Oh, let me go all the way back before I get to that. All right. And so, Tay says, listen, cops are free to kill unarmed black men with abandon and glee. <laughs> this is the black ass reality in the, in the U.S. I shouldn't limit it to just black men. It's black women and children as well. Mm -hmm. They are free to shoot to kill until it's a white woman. Exactly what we just said. Now, said now why, is it, why is it Tay on this show right now? Come on, Tay. You know, so I can get behind the camera. Y'all can just have, y'all can just chop it Come up between both of y'all. You got so. an invitation. And so Dee Dee says, hello, hello to you. Hello. And Nancy, what's happening, girl? You say your hair looks nice. Thank you so yeah, much. She, right now, uh, Demetra, to me, looks like her mother. I look like my mama? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Some people very say, you sound woman. like your mom. Yeah, very beautiful like woman. Very beautiful woman. And then uh, 
And so Didi gave a thumbs up. And Al, what's happening, baby? Say, so you are rocking a new dude. Ladies and gentlemen, I present you the beautiful dark skinned Janelle Monet. Oh, right. Right, there it is. There it is. I don't know about all of that, but thank you. <laughs> hey, hey, I, I, I got me one too. I'm trying to date uh, these little sisters. So. <laughs> uh, 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 Tay says she's cooking dinner. Oh, okay, okay got you. She got, got you. things to do. But what I'm saying is, Tay, Tay knows. You know, she's very well versed in a lot of stuff. Oh, absolutely. And she started with us in the show. And I know she yep. got married to Tay still honeymooning because she was at the BBB <laughs> concert. And uh, look for her uh, on our show the, absolutely. Uh, during the week. So. Absolutely. Hey, Ralph, what's happening? And so I don't see Ben on here, like I said. So hopefully he'll watch this back mm. and he'll understand that it's never okay to kill people. Um, we're never going to get a free pass to kill police officers. Much less white people. Right, you're right. <laughs> you're not getting a license to do that. And so it's better off that we start practicing group economics, self-love, and start, you know, really controlling um, our, our own policing and, and, own and influencing politics in the court system, um, as Dr. Claude Anderson asked us to do, because we are on the very verge of extinction. There is nobody that's coming to save us. Nobody cares. Like, I really don't, I'm trying not to post a lot about a lot of uh, police shootings and stuff that we see. I do. Because, well, to me, it becomes <laughs> like, okay, well, we're, who are we saying this to? Who yeah. are we, whose minds are we trying, trying to change, change that there's a problem? We know there's a problem. Mm -hmm. We keep trying to convince the powers that be. Oh my gosh, just please listen to us. Stop killing us. Treat wait, us wait. fairly. I, I got the answer. What's the answer? If you vote for the Democratic Party, no. we're going to uh, work that DACA angle no. for you. We're going to, no. You don't not Democrat. I'm with her. No, we can't be with her. Why not? She ain't with us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Point point mic drop. Gotta go. We can't be with her. So I mean it, 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 there is a, I would like I said, I would like to like get a magic pill or something to say, let, let's all drink it and all of our problems will go away. Our problems are gonna go away when we make them go away, plain and simple. We have to solve our own problems problems. Hey, Samuel, what's happening? I think I got your topic up next. You say, greetings, sister. Do you think also that the shooting of Mr. Clark was used as a distraction from the Austin bomber? Um, anything's possible because, you know, a lot of times we hear about things being a distraction. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if they, if you're trying to say that maybe they murdered Stephen Clark to create a distraction. Which, which is possible. It's possible. I, I just don't know. And by the way, the Austin bomber, he had a mental illness. So it isn't right. like well, he intentionally went out and was killing Negroes. Right. You know, yeah, he, uh, well, they caught his ass, though, no, no, when he did start killing white people. No, 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 that's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. It's always, the white kid is always the, it's a right. mental illness issue. Black yeah. people were just savages. And you guys know with the Austin bomber, that little nice uh, American white boy picture that we've been seeing of the right. Austin bomber, that wasn't actually what he looked like. He was right. some rugged Looking dude with some right. shaggy blonde, blonde hair. hair yeah, 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 he, himself. But they they put that picture forth of this all American white boy so we can sympathize. Oh gosh, he was just really having some emotional issues here. But the fact of the matter is, like I said, they caught they caught his ass when he uh <laughs> when two white boys got uh blown up. Or mm -hmm. I don't know if they were who what they were, but they were white. Mm -hmm. And that's when it's like, okay, we better get serious now, you know. I'm on the show. I didn't I tell my son that I'm doing the show oh. for the next two hours and yet he still calls <laughs> they, me. They don't listen. These millennials. <laughs> hey Amanda, what's happening? You said I just had a discussion with a black uh, married man to is that my boo thing? married to um, a white woman. Can a black man uh, married who is married to a non black woman be fully conscious and woke? You know what? Somebody else asked me to uh, Billy. He asked me to talk about that, and I absolutely forgot, but I'm going to answer you that question right now. So basically, you're saying, can you be pro-black and married to someone who is not black? Um, honestly, I'm, a lot of people will argue or, or say no, because they'll say the most pro-black thing you can do is love a black woman or a black man. Now, I, I, I kind of I agree with that, but I mean, I don't think that... I, I, to me, it's just kind of hard to answer because to me, it's to each his own. As you guys can see, I'm kind of stumbling over the answer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, because I know that I've been, I've been with black men, you know, my whole life. And so I can really just speak for me. I can't tell a person who is married to somebody who is white that they're not pro-black because that's, that's not for me to say. Sure. But people have defined it as no, pro-black means being with a black man or a black woman. So, and you were with a black man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, 
I've, I've only been with black men. No, no, I'm talking about Big Daddy Kane. Oh, yeah, Big Daddy Kane. <laughs> now, as I say, he looked like Big Biz Markie. Now, he looks like Biz Markie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I hope that answers your question. To me, it's each his own. If you want to follow the, the, the wider definition of what it means to be pro-black, then no. But if, you know, like I said, I can't tell you if you're married to a white man that you're not pro-black. You might be pro-black. Mm -hmm. um, Why should you be happy because you married that white man? <laughs> <laughs> and my point is, whoever you love is who you love. You, that doesn't stop you from being it's, it's who pro, you love. Yeah, pro-black, pro-Asian, whatever you're in. Right. It, and Tay says, um, and the Austin bomber was from a good Christian family. Sure Lord was, have mercy. Sure is, that, is that what they're telling us, too? Mm -hmm. He was from, well, you know, it's not unbelievable because a lot of Trump supporters are good Christians. Yes, yes. You know, look at this. Hell, we, uh, not we, because I don't have TV, but everybody's anticipating the interview of Stormy Daniels. She isn't going to give up much. And she's supposed to be dropping all the details. No, no, you know, because, this, because she's still under that gag order. So, she, you know, she, she got, what it is, what I think is going to happen with that is she's going to drop something salaciously. To, and it's like they're trying to provoke him to break that right. end of it. But real quick. No, go ahead. Before... I want you guys to think about that. Now he's saying that this is a hoax and it's politically motivated. But they've got documents where his name is involved. How do you say, I had nothing to do with it, and the documents already say that that's you? Right. And then there's, isn't another woman that came out yeah, recently? Yeah, she was a Playboy Lord, model. Lord, have mercy. Like, but those are good Christian people. Good Christians. Good Christian people good who are morals. backing and supporting and explaining all the holes away. Yeah. You know? Right. <laughs> These women are, good. you know, they're just trying. They're, they're liberals and they're work of the liberals. And That's why I love Republican women. You know why? Because they don't believe that for a woman should get equal pay for equal work. I love Republican oh, women. God. <laughs> you know? Ralph, you say posting may have helped get some seat. What we have been saying for years. No, I no, I agree. I'm not saying we shouldn't post about uh, police brutality, but I think it's why we're posting. You know, because I see a lot of people lamenting about it. Look what they're doing to us. They keep killing us. They keep killing us. Okay, that they've been doing that since we've been over here, mm -hmm. especially since the end of slavery. We know that the police department and patrols um, were created after slavery to keep us in fear sure. and to keep us in check. Nothing has changed since that point. The only thing that hasn't changed or that has changed is the way we think. We keep waiting for the establishment, the oppressor, white people to save us, and they're not going to do that. Ain't going to happen. And so I hate to say it, it's sad, but there's going to be another police shooting, and one after that, and one after that, until... See, they're not afraid to kill us, because they know we're not going to do anything. And there's no consequences. No consequences. Those Negroes give 97% uh, of all their money away. They have nothing. They basically own nothing. They are, you know, dependent on a lot of the system. And so what are they going to do? They're yeah. going to march. Right. They're going to, you know, maybe jump on a car or two. Right. And then after that, we're going we're gonna to kill somebody else. And what's sad is other cultures come here and they have the same attitude. They pick up the same Absolutely. attitude. Absolutely. Like, what? We can really treat these Negroes like shit? Absolutely. So. And then, uh, so Samuel said the mental so. illness um, uh, was white supremacy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But is what we say the false idea of white supremacy mm -hmm. because they really believe that they have the right to do those things and, and, and they're justified in doing things like shooting people and, and, you know, bombing a black neighborhood. That's, you know, he was sick. He was, something was yeah, wrong with him. And <laughs> Al, you say the only black cops I ever trusted was Barney Collier and uh, from Mission Impossible and Moses <laughs> Hightower from uh, Police Academy. Wait, what about Barney Five from Mayberry? He only had one bullet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And then she said, it's okay for me to raise three African American. Yeah, you say, I think you mean, is it okay for me to raise three African American children? Um, well, to me, I think that's for you to answer. Listen, I'll say this, and I will repeat this until the day I die. I hate to hear and see black people cry about other races adopting or raising black children. Because my thing is, well, how come you didn't beat them to it? If you're so concerned about the welfare and livelihood of black children and them being adopted by other races, then why didn't you beat them to it? Mm -hmm. Why were they in the system in the first place since you're so concerned? Then we got to get out of the habit of, well, you know, I don't like when white people or, you know, Mexican people um, or, you know, Asian or whatever adopt uh, black people and just that is not right. Okay, well, let me see your application for some adoption. Right, and, and then we, we got to stop getting caught in the welfare system, borrowing your, your our kids and our cousins' kids and putting them for the uh, tax return. <laughs> so just go and adopt you some legal kids, right? 
I mean, if I know really it sounds crazy. No, but, but if you're really concerned, we can't right. we can't complain about one end of it and not be because proactive, right? right. And it sadly says, being with your own is best, but in the 60s, you had interracial couples, and they both were on the um, side of the oppressed and against the oppressor. Today, uh, they are light, they're like ostriches hiding, uh-oh, yep, yep. <laughs> hiding I'm their heads, heads in the, the sand, sand to the current problem of the color line. And that's another um, issue people will say in regards to being pro-black or not being pro-black, is that white people in our, or anybody else who's not black in a relationship, they do have the benefit of saying, you know what? Y'all, I'm gonna leave that to y'all. I'm going back over here because I don't have to deal with that. So they got the option of being involved with the black community and then going back home if they want to. And so I, I do agree with you on that. And uh, Kasim, what's happening? You say hello. Al says my stepdad was a Republican, and I told his side piece at the motel she gets equal pay if she does more <laughs> than work. Lord have mercy. You said uh, uh, any video to look at? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, in a minute. Uh, hey Ben, I just covered your topic. I just I don't want to say this to all our listeners. Now we strive to get away from black people color time. Color people. Time. <laughs> okay, so you gotta be on time. When we try to start on time, I, I'm on D all the time. So we, let's break I, Am I getting better? Yes, let's break better. the generational curse. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, Ben. Good to see you. Yeah, Ben. So yeah, I just covered your topic, but you know, and I and I'll refresh it really quick. You say, is, um, when is it going to start being okay for us to off police officers the way they off us? I went through a whole list of things. Mm -hmm. I talked about Ferguson, Missouri, and how they've changed their thing around by voting in uh, people who are representative of them because they are uh, nearly an all-black community. Before, they had an um, all-black community with all-white overseers being city council, police chiefs, and all of that. So they have changed it around by getting people in there that look like them that are going to serve, hopefully, serve their better interests. That's plain and simple. And practicing group economics, as Dr. Claude Anderson says and Glenn Ford, they both say that we need to control and operate the police and the court systems. And of course, that's by, you know, money and power. That, that's how you do it, right? And then so I'm going to move on to the next topic, which um, happens to belong to Samuel X. Clark. Now, he wants to know if we are living in a time of separation or death. And so let me ask this question in reverse to you guys. How has integration, uh, integration, I always say that wrong, um, been working out for us so far? Have we reached equality? Have we obtained real black wealth? Destroyed us. Ahead, Have sir. we been given justice under the integration and, um, system and under the laws of civil rights? Well, I think we can all agree that the answers are Failed. no. Failed. Okay. Failed and so, experiment. I like uh, so now to answer the question we are dying now so why not separate Marcus Garvey was trying to get us to do that back in the early 1900s because we were going through the same issues as we're going through today mm -hmm. and a hundred plus years later here we are okay so it's like at some point in time we have to just understand that you know the integration process it, it I don't know what it worked for because to me, yeah, I mean, th there's laws that say we can't, you know, kill you, even though they still do. Um, we, we can't separate you. You can't, um, we can't tell you not to come into this restaurant, which I don't understand why anybody would want to go into a restaurant that doesn't want you there. Because for one thing, you're probably doing something real ill to my food. Mm -hmm. So I probably don't want to eat there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I just want, why would I force that? You... Listen, I want you to serve me now. I I deserve it. You know, I'm equal to you. I'm a man too. I'm a woman too. You need to feed me. Okay, I'll feed you. Well, well, well. Let's look at the same experience. You thought South Africa, and everybody knows I've been uh, keeping up on the South mm -hmm. Africa thing. Uh, what's going on in South Africa? It's been t over 20 years since apartheid, and Nelson Mandela and the ANC took over there. Mm -hmm. Still, 70 percent of the wealth is owned by the white folks. So, right. What 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 changed? Right, I mean, so, you know, should we separate? Are we at the point of separation of death? We, we've been, Pat, we've been mm. to that point a long time ago. They just gave us the false idea of civil rights. Okay, you know what, let's give these Negroes something to pacify them, to make them think, you know, okay. It, you know, if you think about it, it kind of basically deconstructed our own that's community. A, that's what it was for, though. Well, to because these community. Negroes are getting wise, they're wising up, they're, they're realizing getting rich. they're getting rich because they don't need us. Mm -hmm. And so they're learning unity. We never wanted them to be unified. And so that we 
have, you know, these Jim Crow laws and stuff. They're unified because they figure, okay, well, if they, they don't want to be with us, we're going to be amongst ourselves, right. which good, is the right thing to do. Right. Good thing, like in Roots, if you learn to uh, read, we would teach everybody in the community. And that's right. why they broke them up and said, the minute you learn to read, either we killed, they killed us or they should ship us off somewhere right. to keep us separate. Stuff like that. And then Usanga, um, I don't see him on here, and I'm going to get to you guys' comments. Um, he says, if not now, when do we separate from this devil? And I mean by any means necessary. And so as I said before... I would like to say there's a disclaimer as <laughs> say, my name is Donovan Sadiq and the, the comments and <laughs> suggestions by some of the readers has nothing to do with me. I, Our, I, yeah, I, I'm getting a federal check. That's why I got to be, be careful. Uh, the time is now. Yes, time is now. The time is now. There's never... Listen, because we keep waiting for... Uh, I think Tay says you're on her way. I'm not sure if she was telling the truth <laughs> okay. or not. Um but we keep waiting for everybody, or not everybody, but the oppressor to say, you know what? All right, now. it's I know it's been 500 years. We haven't treated you right, but we're going to treat you right now. And that's not going to happen. I mean, it's like they say, you got to teach people how to treat you. And there's no different from us as black people. Not that we got to teach them how to treat us. We just got to treat ourselves better. And so I'll get to you guys' comments. Uh... And then Shantae says, on my way. So we'll see if she's on her way. And Al says, Bar uh, Barney Fife was a white cop. I was talking about uh, uh, black policemen. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Uh, and then Billy, hey, he says, I'm late. What's going on? I'm actually about to get to your um, comment in just a second. So CPT right time. time. <laughs> CPT. CPT time. Uh, hey, Jonathan, what's happening? He said, the South Africans just voted to take over all farmlands, including white owners. Yes. yes. Listen to us on Wednesdays. I, yes. I report that. I've been mm -hmm. reporting that for about three weeks now. Yep. We, we talk about that. And uh, on our YouTube pages, we have a lot of uh, white South Africaners or <laughs> exactly. Africaners or Boers or whatever right. they call it. They're, they ain't happy with us at all. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they're basically saying that the white farmers, if that happens, that they're going to burn and tear up the land and destroy mm -hmm. the homes. They won't leave anything left over for the white uh, for the black people and the australians are opening up and saying you guys mm -hmm. can come over here because that country you live in is not civilized yeah they're right insulting. so they're opening up a you know um, mm -hmm. a pathway for them to go over to australia which is like bye see y'all later mm -hmm. um what else is going on uh and then um some people here in the united states said that mm -hmm. trump should uh open uh the refugees for them because they bring a press and over trump there. ain't said nothing he said trump nothing. ain't said a word he like uh <laughs> didn't i call them some shitholers not too long ago <laughs> yeah. i should have clarified i didn't mean the white right, ones right <laughs> <laughs> they're also saying too you know on our, our pages that uh, black people, they're not going to survive long over there. They won't be able to, they won't know what to do with the land. Right. And, and here's the thing, you know, I, and I'm glad, you know, we have some intelligent listeners and uh, things like that. The reason why these uh, African states like Zimbabwe and Kenya and uh, Somalia are failed states is because of the Western sanctions against them. Absolutely. It isn't, it had nothing to do with the land. We taught them how to farm. Absolutely. Well, we know that. Yeah, we know that. But, yeah. you know, they're trying to pull one over on us. Yeah, our so, so, so our failure is done by outside forces. And, you know, uh, export, uh, expropriation without compensation. Station. Basically, they're saying, go home and we ain't paying you. Right. That's what they're saying. And it ain't like they don't have a home to go to. They have a home they to go to. They have plenty of homes to go to. Right. Pick one. That's, I think right. that's 10. Okay. Um, and then so uh, Samuel say the black man has no rights that the white man is bound to respect. The biggest mockery of uh, jihad to call us citizens. If we really were, we'd still be seen. We shall yeah. overcome. No, absolutely. Hey, Tay. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. You can't take a chair. Um, no, no, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, Eric, what's happening? And Ralphie say people will treat us badly uh, as we let them. No, absolutely. You got to teach people how to treat you and we have been uh just joined by tay you guys just saw her over here she got in her um what is it her uh lightning machine she got <laughs> over here uh shante she's here <laughs> i live a swift seven minutes i'm gonna away. turn the camera on so they can see you really quick oh, okay here's miss tay <laughs> she has just joined us so she you guys are going to be hearing from her too okay and so um and then Billy says, Australia are um, talking about taking the white people. Yeah, that's what they're saying. They're saying, you know, we'll let them come over here because we're more civilized and we know how to treat people. And we're like, well, what are you waiting on? You know, 
get, get, uh, get the boats or planes or whatever you need to do. And that's right, Africa is our land. And then Al, you say, if the restaurants are trying to keep black people out of their establishments, then Walmart must be <laughs> doing the same thing about hiring the grouchy, lazy, oh my God, black women <laughs> with the nasty attitude. Oh you my God, what? door greeter? We ain't gonna even address that one. Mm -mm. And Bing said, integration was the worst thing to happen to black people. It um, has not benefited us all. Look how long we've been fighting, marching, protesting for basic civil rights. All, uh, you say, go all for TV, nothing. Let's see, see more. Ooh, you wrote a novel. <laughs> well, we're not speaking their language. We're speaking peace while the powers that be speak war every chance they get. They only understand two things, loss and finance and loss of life. I am at the point where I'm tired of asking, begging to be treated fairly. So F it. They won't let us live anyway. I say, let's take some of them with us, Lord. <laughs> Here comes his disclaimer. Uh, disclaimer, this is the opinion of Ben Knight and does not represent the <laughs> yeah. thoughts of Demetri K. or Donovan yes. or Tay. Yes. <laughs> and well, I, I get, jump I right get in my here. my federal yes. checks. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. You know <laughs> I'm down if it comes to my money. Yeah. Wait, is, is he a double Muslim? Because they they, they can't wait to see Allah. What's, a, what's a double Muslim? Those are, a double Muslim is a person that can't wait to see Allah. I want to take you with him. I, I don't think uh, Ben is a double Muslim. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and take jump right in, whatever. I didn't know that was yeah, a thing. Jump right double on Muslim. in. Double hey, Muslim. Ronald, you said that's what's wrong with no justice, uh, no justice, peace, or equality. Modern day slavery handed down from our oppressor. No, absolutely. They have given us the illusion of. Well, you have some civil rights now. Go be happy. Just take it and be happy. You can drink with us. You can eat with us. Give us a couple, a couple breadcrumbs. And yeah, stuff. all Go of play. that. You're right. And then just cool out, you know. And the Kasim, he says, your camera is crooked, huh? Is it crooked? A little bit. Oh. Is it? That's because I, I keep turning it. How about that? Maybe it's me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm crooked. I, I do apologize for that. I don't know what I can do to, to straighten that out, but... Bear with me. And then Samuel says, those countries sound like Gandhi who called Africans keepers. Yeah, Gandhi was, a, a lot of people, we've been taught that Gandhi was this, yeah, I mean, I'm sure he was for peace and all this other stuff, but he didn't like black people. He, I mean, he, Most Indians don't. Yeah, he was on record saying that basically um, we are beneath him and, you know, but, Indians and just everybody but, in general. But their culture is a caste system, a class yeah, system, right. so... So we were, they cast us way at the bottom. Yes. Right. <laughs> we're on the bottom of the social cast. Mm -hmm. Abdullah, what's happening? He says, MLK was bad for us. I'm moving out of America. Where are you going? Maybe we want to come with you. Go to and Costa Donald, hey, we gave you a birthday shout out about 15 minutes ago. So happy birthday to you. Enjoy your 21st birthday. <laughs> Turn up for the rest of us. And then Ralph says, Australians treat their Aborigines badly as well. Mm -hmm. Right. So they want to treat the Aboriginal people bad. But then they want to uh, bring over some more white people and treat them better. <laughs> like, how, oh, okay, whatever. And then Al says, double Muslim is a pork-free meal at the soul food restaurant. <laughs> ah, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> so, um, you, you, want, you got anything to say, Tay? Or? No, I'm not. Okay, just jump on in. I'm here with Tay and Donovan, you guys. So, I'm going to go on to the next subject that comes from Mr. Billy Wynn. See, you were right on time. All right, so you said, don't forget about Byron Allen buying the Weather Network. You know, let's talk about the, uh, you know, I'm disappointed that uh, President Obama uh -huh. called those young men out there in Baltimore thugs. Ah. And, uh, yeah. and I'm not condoning violence. Of course not. But I don't think we should call them thugs because we've positioned them to fail. Yeah. And the system has failed them. Yeah, and has. I say to President Obama, you have to remember who you are. Right. Don't forget who you are. Don't forget who you are, brother, up in the White House. You Don't know? forget who right. you are. <laughs> and hey, you know. I, I, I have grave concerns about President Obama because I feel that it's, it's, a, it's factual. Check yeah. the numbers. Black people have fallen further behind under President Obama. We're being murdered in the streets. We're being murdered in the courtroom. We're being murdered in the boardroom. You've caught the biggest corporations using the N-word. You have to stand up at some point. It's okay to be the president of the United States and also be a black man. It's human, and guess what? People will respect you more if you stop acting like you're not. President Obama is, at this point, 
a white president in blackface. Oh, Black wow. America would have done much better with a white president. Yeah. Look at the numbers. Right. President Obama, you have let us down tremendously. Okay. You have let us down. Okay, so Byron Allen bought the Weather Channel for $300 million from Blackstone Group, Bain, Capital, and Comcast. Mm -hmm. Originally, they purchased it for $3.5 billion in 2008. However, um, let's see, they did not sell Allen the Weather.com site or the mobile apps. But Allen brought it anyway because he said he was attracted to the familiarity of the brand. Allen also owns Entertainment Inc. The company produces television and uh, television shows and films. It also owns Comedy.com, Cars.tv. Those are both distributed online and through pay TV providers. Right. As I was watching the Bloomberg Network um, report about the acquisition, I noticed that the news pundits were hating. They were basically saying that Byron made a mistake by purchasing it because um, other people looked at it and the numbers didn't really match up and people don't watch TV anymore anyway. And so they were, I mean, they were just plain old hating, basically saying he made a mistake. Um, it's not going to do well. Did right. He... Uh, a quick correction. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't purchased for $300 billion. It was purchased for $300 million. No. He he purchased it for $300 million, but the original owners... It wasn't billions. It wasn't in the billions then. Uh, that's what Bloomberg said. Yeah, it wasn't 3. in the billions. 3.5 billion. It wasn't in the billions back then. We, we weren't even dealing with billions back okay, then. Okay, well, maybe they so, made a mistake. Yeah, they, they, they made I'm a mistake. I'm just going off my research. Right, so it wasn't 300 <laughs> billion. And nobody's going to have a network that does weather for 300. You can't make any money off of that. Uh, num uh, num number five, six, and seven. So that, well, that they did say too on the, um uh, during my research that a lot of people do turn to no, no, they do. Know. But what I'm saying mm -hmm. is, uh, the weather channels don't make enough revenue to be worth 300 in the billions. That's what I'm saying. Well, and and, and to that point, they were saying too that he made a mistake in not. I guess they're saying that the purchasing the, the, the dot com yeah. is more lucrative, lucrative because right. most people check the smartphones thing. and things like but, that. But you know, Byron Allen is not a dummy. No, he's not. They did liken him to uh, Tyler Perry in that he owns his own production studio and he's made, you know, major movies. And for those of you guys that, that don't know some of the mm -hmm. work that Byron Studios puts out, it's I a lot of, a, yeah, a, a lot of the court TV, daytime TV yeah. shows is what he's behind. Especially mm -hmm. Gloria Albert. Right. Uh, Judge so Maybelline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Judge Maybelline and things like that. But he also, he's, um, his production company has had some uh, award nominations because of Mm -hmm. His Emmy Award like, nominations. Uh, some uh, movie called Forty Seven. Yes. Yeah. Something. Yeah. We the People. There's yeah. a whole bunch mm -hmm. of other stuff. And for us mm -hmm. old fogies, if you, if you don't remember uh, Byron Allen, he was a young comedian mm -hmm. in the seventies. Yes. What was that show? It was. Um, I think real people or something, something like, like that. Yeah. Something yeah. Like that. I'm sure Al would know. Where Where is yeah, Byron Al. Allen from? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, and so. Uh, Donald says, thank you. Love y'all. We love you too. And Billy says, your camera is good. And, and Gandhi <laughs> was a bitch. He sat, up, <laughs> he sat upon his Bible. Yikes. Yikes. Wow. Woo. Gandhi we going to take bitch. your word for it. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Abdulli says, I'm building a house in Honduras in West Africa. Come on, Demetri K. We can grow our food free of chemtrails and pesticides. I'm on my way. I just got to bring Al with me, you know. <laughs> and, you know, and our kids might want to go, too. <laughs> Can I bring my daddy? <laughs> <laughs> and Al says, Byron Allen is buying the Weather Channel. Um, is he trying to make it rain? No pun. Yeah, he's trying to make it rain. I believe he's got, he's got I don't think he's just going to do weather. I think he's probably no, going to expand it. Diversify. Mm -hmm, it and time. do some other stuff. Now, now, we talk about Oprah Winfrey and what a uh, multimedia mogul she, she is. She isn't making moves like this. That's why I tell people, Oprah is not a billionaire. She is nowhere near it. I, I, hey, I take your word for it. I just know what I read. They say she's like three billion strong. And okay, so if she's three hundred billion strong, you not three hundred, but three. Right. Yeah. But I think so, where she made her money was when she was praying off the white women. You know, no, 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 absolutely. Sure. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. And then you know, with Own and Harpo mm -hmm. Studios mm -hmm. and all that right. other fun stuff. And then when she dumped Harpo Studios and mm -hmm. moved out to Cali, she's in Montecino, you know, right. with Orange mm -hmm. Groves and all mm -hmm. this other wonderful stuff. Um, she kind of dibbles and dabbles there, but I think that's where she made the bulk of her money right. was owned. But, 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 oh, for no, sure, but, yeah. but basically what I'm saying is, mm -hmm. as a multimedia person, you're out there doing deals and stuff. You don't hear Oprah doing these kind of deals. No, I don't think yeah. that's her lane, per right. se. I think she does whatever she feels like. I think like Oprah Ball is still. Well, you right. see that house in Montecito? Oh, yeah. That's just one of them. Mm -hmm. 
And Billy says, oh, Lord, this nigga has been on TV since 1978 <laughs> with real people. Real people. See, I, I forgot that was it. Billy is a TV official mm -hmm. and model, too. Um, he said, which was a show on ABC. ABC. Ask the buddy next to you. Okay. Fran Tarkenton was on yeah. it. Um, so that white woman, I forgot, Sarah Purcell. No. Sarah Purcell. I know nothing about this stuff. <laughs> I didn't get to watch a lot of TV. Uh, and then you also say he was selling jokes to Jimmy Walker and Jay Little mm -hmm. when he was 14. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, y'all really know y'all stuff. And Donnie says, wasn't he on air? That old show, That's Incredible? Was he on yes. That? Oh, yes. That's Incredible. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to watch That's Incredible. I don't remember him on there. He'd be a blurb on there, but he was on there. I didn't, I never remember. I remember uh, the two white men and the, uh, the blonde uh, lady. lady. Yeah, yeah and they were like, Sarah. That's Incredible. Mm -hmm. Sarah yeah, people Sarah. doing pretty gross things on there. And then y'all, uh, Billy, you say, plus he never gets old. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, he, he, looks he looks good. good. Hey, Arson, how are you? He says, thank you for the information, guys. I really didn't know Byron Allen. A lot of people probably really didn't. Um, and as Tay and Donovan said, he's behind um, the court TVs, and, which I didn't know that. I didn't and know he was that big. Yes. He's also done a mm -hmm. couple of really good documentaries at entertainment mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. studios. Mm -hmm. There's some that I didn't even know he was behind. So I'm actually quite impressed. I'd be interested with in knowing what Byron those are. He did Hostels. He did that one documentary. That, Chappaqu that horror movie Hostels? Mm -hmm. Really? Chappaquiddick. Mm -hmm. Chappaquiddick was oh, the most recent yes. one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Chappaquiddick was the most recent one. And the um, the lovely young girl from Blackish. She did, he did a sitcom. It was like First Family or something. It was a it was a yeah. black sitcom. Yeah. It used to come on Channel Dara 9 Shahidi. on Saturdays. Yeah. yeah. The young girl that just got into Harvard or Yale. Uh, yeah. she, and has, she has uh, Grownish? Is she on the yes. show Grownish? Okay. She was also mm -hmm. on a sitcom that was produced by I, I had Island. no idea. Mm -hmm. Byron been working yeah, behind and, the and scenes. And starring that, that was Bill Bellamy on that show. Right? Didn't he star in that show? Was it Bill I know what yeah, you're Bill talking Bellamy. about, but I don't think mm -hmm. that was him. Uh, and John Lovitz. I know who you're talking about. He's like a sports agent. So. I think it's Bill And Bellamy. Alan said, Byron Allen also hosted the NBC show Games right. People Play, where Mr. T yep. was discovered. Yes. Yep. yes. News to me. <laughs> I just thought Mr. T just happened to be on, uh, what's the name of that show? Uh, A-Team. A-Team. No. I picked the food. <laughs> Uh, Abdulia says, Oprah is a billionaire. Oprah is a powerful feminist. Um, if she becomes president, she will put all niggas <laughs> that look like me in jail. I better speed up my, uh, mm. speed up my movie process. Shaking my head. All, I, all I got to say to you, if you're claiming to be a billionaire, let me see your taxes, and that'll put, put it to rest. I don't until think I Oprah it. would have a problem with that. Yeah, but she's why would Oprah open. lie about that? She got a reason to, but, though. I'm not saying she's not. I'm just saying, don't tell me nothing until I see your taxes. Well, true. Oprah ain't got a lie to kick it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're trying to play Stedman number two. Okay. Right, right, right which I can do. Then you might have to show her your income taxes. <laughs> Look, I'll, I'll tell anybody, I'm broke. Yeah, right. I'm broke. Now, Tay is balling. No, I'm not. Tay is balling. No, I'm not. Tay and I outranked her. She said, I don't talk my money. Okay. <laughs> Al says, Oprah's um, Harpo Studio is um, drag. Who wants to keep hearing her play the swan song? No pun. I don't even know what that means. Um, hey, oh, I was just talking about you. He said, just tune in. What are you discussing? Well, right now, and we're about to transition. Uh, I was talking about Billy. Oh, Byron Allen. We were talking about Byron Allen acquiring the weather uh, channel and saying, you know, I guess just discussing it, all the stuff that he produces and he owns. We just, but with that, the weather mm -hmm. channel um, is also used by so many. It's a source for a lot of GPS devices. To right. Mm -hmm. A lot of these mobile apps use the weather channel as Noah, all those guys use weather channel as a basis. Okay. So he's smart for tapping in mm -hmm. one of the oldest and that's networks. what he said, too, because he realizes a lot of people are familiar with the Weather mm -hmm. Channel. I mean, I don't have TV, but if I needed to know some weather, and I have gone to weather.com, which he doesn't own, but people are familiar with um, the Weather Channel being like the go-to for weather. And so, and, and I also discussed your um, topic as well. You wanted to know, you know, when are we going to uh, separate? When is the time to do it by any means necessary? And you know, I said now. Now is the time to do that. We we can no longer wait to do that. And then Ars um, Arson, you said, just came in, not sure what I missed so far, but did one of you say that Oprah did or did not make a lot of her money with her channel own? Yes, uh, Tay actually said that uh, Oprah made a lot of her money with the own network. Um, and I, I believe that she has as well. Now, if you guys remember um, with, before... Well, right when Oprah started, she was having some concerns. She was There's like, yo, this is, it, she didn't think it was going to work out. But then she 
you know, had Tyler Perry come over, and I think that probably helped her save it. Well, <laughs> well, 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 oh well, my God, well, I, can't, I can't stand yeah, it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what had happened, and me and Deep talked about this, and Tay, we talked about this in, in pre previous shows. Uh, Oprah started her network, and it was catered to white women. Well, yeah, it was supposed and, to be the lifetime, right. the new and, lifetime. And I'm right. going to show you. I'm going to turn my camera again so you guys can see who was talking. Yeah. For those of you who got to come on, and, that's and, Tay. Yeah. And, and they ended up um, finding out that white women weren't, weren't doing it and the viewership. And we talk about... Right. Like Fox and all it those things. It was a serious content issue for Owen in the right. very beginning. And right. that's why she, when they revamped... They, um, they wanted oh, to bring the tomfoolery. When you bring the tomfoolery and you get the black viewers... Well, I mean, when you bring the bullshit, people like the bullshit. Oh, so they brought in Tyler is. Perry, which I and think, to me, is not a voice for black people. It's a voice for those who like to shuck and jive and all that. <laughs> yeah. But it is not a voice for me and my blackness, nor <laughs> probably for you and your blackness. And remember when Ayala, I believe that's how you say her name, when she first got on there, too... Oh. She had. She was talking about, you know, talking Serious to white things? people, Mexican people. She's talking to everybody. Mm -hmm. But then when she saw the drama, you know, was ratcheting up the views. When and she talked about, well, now there. she's talking about the dude with thirty six kids, right? The gay <laughs> pastor who's sleeping around with everybody in the church. And so that's like, I don't know when the last. I don't watch it, but from all the shows that I've seen, like on YouTube or Facebook, it's all black people now. With it, the worst problems. It is black people, and a lot of it sometimes is black Z-list celebrities, so you can right. see the hip-hop crowd and all that other stuff. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> because I will, I mean, I have cable, so I will peruse, you know, I have my favorites, mm -hmm. and I'll stick Owen on there, because mm -hmm. I want to see, because sometimes Oprah's master class sure. is legit. Right. It's a good class. Mm -hmm. um, but then that Yama thing, I loved it in the beginning, and then it became this whole minstrel show, like and I was ratchet, like, girl, just ratchet, just everything, the whole thing is ratchet. But that's the... To me, that's the problem with black-centered television. Mm -hmm. Because now, to me, I like TV One. I end up mm -hmm. in the joint TV One. Even though one they got rid of thing. Roland Martin. Yeah, which makes me yeah. mad. Because that was a good yeah. new... I liked it. I, I, I like TV One for Centrix, the videos, the old school videos. Well, not yeah. just that. It's um, <laughs> uh, the unsung and unsung right. Hollywood. Right. I like right. to see yeah. all the doo-wop pop groups mm -hmm. back. Right. I want to hear... But, that's it to me. That's all we have because everything else is just a joke. The silliness. Mm -hmm. Now, I would agree with you on that as far as Tyler Perry. On, I mean, it's just, and I know um, some of y'all watching love Tyler Perry <laughs> stuff on um, own. I, I just can, I, I, I tried. Cannot, I couldn't do it. Can't Up, do it. Our numbers are going down. You guys uh -oh. talk about some ratchet. <laughs> quick, quick, quick. <laughs> nah, they, they ain't on, on, on that on, on this uh, feed. Can't and talk so, about Tyler Perry. Robbie says, time to buy stocks in his companies. You know what? It's very smart. Yes. And the Kasim, he says, what's the main topic of this show again? And are you planning on airing um, on Blackspot.com? Oh, what's this? I, I've never, I don't think I've heard of Blackspot.com. Send us some more information. I, I, I will actually um, look that up, Blackspot.com. Now, the topic of the show, um, what I did was I asked uh, different uh, friends on Facebook for, uh, to help me out with topics, and they gave me quite a few. And so we're just talking about uh, uh, Stefan Clark, the uh, young man that was murdered by the police in Sacramento. We're talking about is it um, should black people is it time for black people to separate separate from everybody else? Um, we also just got through talking about um, Byron Allen acquiring the Weather Channel. And so, did you find out what? Uh, oh, I thought somebody. I'm was trying to get him. it to come up. Oh, okay. And so we're gonna move along. Now I need y'all to help me with this, but let me finish you guys' comments. And so uh, Billy says, "I've been a fan of Byron Allen for years. Apparently, you got all the scoop on Byron Allen, the scoop that we didn't have." <laughs> And Al said, that's incredible, on ABC with the host John Davidson. Yes, uh, I should, yes, oh, John Davidson, he was the host. Kathy Lee Griffin um, yeah. and yeah. Uh, Fran Tarkington. Was yeah. Kathy yeah. Lee Griffin on yeah. That's Incredible? She was Kathy Lee. Yeah. I did not even realize that. She's been around a long time. That, that's long. an old She looks different. Yes. Well, she's had some work done. Okay, Kathy Lee's been around mm -hmm. a long time. Because I remember her being, like, very blonde on That's Incredible or something. Yeah. Okay. And Billy says, IRS shows Oprah's taxes. Uh-oh. Well, so what is it? And then Donald says, Tay, who that? <laughs> <laughs> She's married. <laughs> and so are you. <laughs> <laughs> Al says, Oprah's Harpo Studio Swan Song. Mm -hmm. I, I still don't know what that means. I don't watch Oprah Harpo Studios. Hey, Jonelle, what's happening? Rocket says, nice green screen setup. Yes. When you guys see the video, it won't be a green screen. It'll be some videos, and I'm supposed to be telling Donovan uh, to put up some videos, but I can't. I haven't thought of it. Whenever you do a topic, think about a video. I haven't thought of it so, yet. I'm a work in progress, y'all. Uh, uh, Donald says thanks. 
And uh, Al says, Oprah thinks she is so smart putting her Wrinkle in Time BS movie out a week after Black Panther, thinking it would overtake it in the box office sales. I haven't heard anything about Wrinkle, Wrinkle in Time. It was a good movie for girls. Okay. I enjoyed the book. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like the I, book, too. The book was good. The mm -hmm. movie... But it was a good fantasy for black girls. It was a good thing because it talked about, you know, our hair. Mm -hmm. It talked about a lot of things oh, now I didn't, for they black didn't do girls. They didn't do all that in the book, did yeah. they? No, they didn't. Oh. I don't remember that in the book at all. It makes me want to go back and reread the book. Mm -hmm. But the movie was good. If you have a little black girl that struggles or has want you want to empower your little girl. Oh, well, that's good to it's know. A good, it's a good movie for that. I don't have daughters, but I really want to take my nieces. That's good to know. I mean, I... I didn't hear, I heard it came out, and I hadn't heard anything else sense. about it at all. And our song, um, you say, so about this behind the scene guy, in his acquisition of the channel, something that could somehow help or be good for blacks in the U.S., um, so, so is it something good? I'm asking because I never forgot how Umar Johnson, uh-oh, mm -hmm. uh, let's see, Umar Johnson... I said a long time that there were some areas where they, uh, quote unquote, would not let black people get in, such as owning a transportation airlines and TV channels, mm -hmm. because it could potentially change our situation, becoming more independent, yes. exchanging info, etc. By the way, about News One, that host who got fired, I liked him up until the interview with Umar Johnson. I would agree with mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And I think that's where uh, a lot of uh, black people who watched it were like, wait a second. Because, I mean, the interview was totally a got you interview. I don't know if y'all saw that. I saw it. I saw it parts of it. Oh, my God. He, uh, Roland and two of the other guests, I mean, they just, like, they tried Jumping. the dog pile, but he was mm -hmm. like, ugh, ugh, get off me, get off me. Yeah, yeah it wasn't a good look for Roland. Uh, but is it a good thing? Yeah, I, absolutely, it's a good thing. Whenever black people, because as Dr. Claude Anderson says, black people own less than 3% of the media, any media outlets. And so the more uh, media outlets that black people acquire, better for us because we can put out our own narratives. Um, and we know that Byron Allen is for black people. Um, Donovan, you actually put up an <coughs> article about uh, Byron Allen uh, taking President Obama to task and yes. saying that he's basically just shining for the man. But yeah. what did I tell you months ago? Yeah. Obama was put there to stop the uh, Occupy right. movement and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And, and, and the minute he, he became president, what happened to all that? Rap. And that's where he, pretty much what he said. You know, Byron Allen mm -hmm. said that he hadn't done anything for black people. Nobody on Wall Street was uh, prosecuted mm -hmm. under the Obama administration. Right. And, and they, they also talked about how actually things have gone backwards for black people under mm -hmm. the uh, Obama, Obama administration. administration. Yeah. Unemployment, mm -hmm. uh, police brutality, you name right. it. So... And then they also showed the quote where uh, Obama continuously said, "Well, I'm the president of everybody." everybody. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and but then, did you really? But expect, I still love Obama. Don't get me but wrong. Did you, I, I mean, but would you really expect him to really say he's the president or of of, of black people or he's representing black people no. when they already were burning effigies of the man? Yeah. <laughs> you right. know, they call his wife all right. kinds. She's a man. She's a monkey. Mm -hmm. They follow his kids. Right. They can't even go to, one of them can't even go to college without, you know, right. just living her. They do anything and everything to discredit this man, no matter what little mm -hmm. accomplishments he did make. Mm -hmm. So if he it did turn around and say, well, hey, I love all black people, right. what would happen then? Right, exactly. Well, I think he, uh, I, I agree. I don't think it was something he could have said, like, hey, I'm, now that you everybody's elected me, I'm the president of black people. I, he couldn't have said Get that. Get your guns. No, but he definitely could have done some things for black people. Yeah. As he did, you know, for the LGBTQ, or how you mm -hmm. say it, community, um, women, mm -hmm. uh, DACA, all Wall that. Street. Wall Street. Rich so, yeah, folks. he could have said, you know what? How about that 40 acres and the mule? Mm -hmm. You know, or something. Bug the chicken. But I think <laughs> Give me a presidential do rag. Three hundred dollars for some uh, Jordans. Something. But I think he was he was playing the 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 Democratic you know the going through the Democratic oh, yeah. and you know the LGBTQ. Yeah. So <laughs> after that. Well, well, I'm gonna have to disagree with you because there is no Democratic agenda. There is no Republican agenda. There's only the ruling agenda. Right. Again, Nancy Pelosi has been in office for over 30 years, and she was an average person. This woman is now worth over 100 million dollars. Look at yeah. Diane Feinstein. Same thing, exactly. And I was afraid so, Maxine so, Waters. So, but so that's they're why playing I said the, uh, But that's why I said the Democratic Party, just like with the mm -hmm. Republican Party, they need all. Everyone in there right now needs to be thrown out, and mm -hmm. we need fresh blood. If you're going to play the rules and play it right, but I don't want it to be at the sacrifice of me and mine and my taxes. Well, that's, what, that's where it's and at. That's what, and, but that's what's happening, mm -hmm. and that's what's being allowed that's exactly to happen. exactly what's mm -hmm. going on. 
So Billy, you say you are doing great. Maybe you need to put your business in a movie and get more money. You are a black actress. Am I? Um, who, who am I? Uh, am I Lena Horne? No, just wait. Okay. Uh, <laughs> quick disclaimer. I want everybody uh -oh. to remember this. Remember that this. Donovan is the thespian here. No, no, no. Oh, no. Nothing to do with that. I'm a businessman. Uh, Demetra is under contract. Oh. Me and Al. <laughs> Until that contract <laughs> is settled, Demetra is not going anywhere. Oh, well, all right. And did your server too, like I said to y'all last week. And so Billy says, Black Panther dropped uh, num to number two today. Oh, my uh, God. Well, I mean, it was that bound to happen. But right? it was, it was five Pacific Rim. Right. So it was another uh, another, uh, another movie led by a black, black actor, man. John Boyega, that now made it number right. one. Well, what, hey, you know, sounds all like it's a win-win to me. And Cassini says, Blackspot.com is a black-owned and operated social media outlet, kind of like Facebook, but more freedom of speech. I, You know what? I'm here for it. Yeah, me too, because I was thinking that the other day. I said, I need to get on a black social media to where, like you said, we don't have all of the, okay, well, you go into Facebook jail because you said this word. So or no somebody Black Planet? Is, yeah, the Black uh, Planet. Is Black Planet still running? Yeah, it is, actually. Oh. It is. Um, we're trying. That's why we do this platform. Okay. We're trying. Right now, what are we doing right now? We're on four different social platforms to get our we message out. be black owned. Because these people can shut us down anytime they want to. No, no, I'm a veteran. That won't happen. Oh, he's a veteran, so that ain't going to happen. <laughs> Y'all know. YouTube is cracking down. No, I mean, no, a no, with no. Some, 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 no, no, no. He I, got a metal plate. Yeah, in yeah. No, I was saying that to be the facetious because, you know, <laughs> right, I'm a veteran. Yeah. Like, right. When, when the white guy gets ready to put us in slavery, blacks will not, uh, that were in the military will not be exempt. We're, we're going to be on the, on the, in, in the well, field. Are you taking medicine today? I sure okay, did. I have your you plantation sure playlist ready to go. Alex says, I asked my two daughters did they want to see Wrinkle in Time movie, and they said half in word. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid. You, you need to take them. It sounds like it'll be a good <laughs> a good movie for you to take them to see. And Arson says, yes, we can put our own narratives on the news, but will we do it? Uh, that's a lot of people, I would say including all of us here, that would love to put our narratives on on the news or out there for others to see. Well, there's a lot of us who are tired of seeing the narratives about us that saying that we are ratchet. You know, like the Atlanta Housewives, you know, they got money, I guess, so they say, but they no, really they don't. don't. Mm -hmm. But they act they have the worst behavior. All of you know Tyler Perry stuff on own. These people are the worst behaving people on the planet. So yes, there's a lot of us that would love to see the true narrative about black Right, people. but we got to put the true narrative. You just can't be all, we're queens and we're this and we're that. <laughs> no, we And you look show, like a clown or but, whatever. But, but we, we can show a realism exactly. of black people, how it's reflected in, in every demographic from, you know, from the hood to Baldwin Hills. We can always... So, right, but not just that one little part. But not part. just focus on that one demographic mm -hmm. because we are more than just hood rats and gangbangers right. and all that other fun stuff. We're some intelligent, beautiful people. That's right, and Donovan. we need the media to reflect that. And if we don't have the the the, the outlets, you know, in the big major studios, and start from someone's garage. Hello, me and D always. I agree there with you. you I agree with you. But don't we always say this, D? If if I could get you two twerking, I'd have a million followers right well, now. Well, that's true because remember that dude with the Walmart video? <laughs> exactly. Oh, he yeah. He shot in Louisiana down there. I'm going to Walmart. Walmart. <laughs> I'm going to Walmart. Don't even ask he me how I know that's right. the right. world. Right. <laughs> funny thing is that guy ended up going to jail. <laughs> you know what is funny? I actually called him on a number he put up and uh -huh. I said, is this for real? And he said, yes. Wow. Yeah. So, oh, you said our spirits have been colonized, so we must first separate from their religion so we can remember who we are. We must undo what we have been uh, fed to believe. White Jesus ain't never done nothing for us. Let's see. Seymour, nothing, never done nothing for us. Obama ain't uh, done nothing either. And Byron right. Allen is correct. And, I mean, that's in a nutshell. But, like they say, you can't talk about Barack, Jesus, or Beyonce in our community. Otherwise, it's going to be curtains for you. But that's okay. We're not trying to change everybody's mind. Just the people who are willing to listen and say, okay, what next? Where do we go from here? And to your point, Byron Allen is on that path. He, he understands what needs to take place in order to elevate us. And owning, you know, a good amount of the media is a great start. We can start getting the, you know, okay, somebody was shot over here. You know, we can start making a big deal out of things that happen in our community instead of it just being a little blurb on, right. you know, uh, somebody did a little crawler on the screen. Because the Weather Channel does have a lot of shows. Mm -hmm. And I think people don't really realize that. They have, sure. like, their today mm -hmm. their version of the Good Morning America Today my, show. My, my, my brother's uh, uh, weather 
Hurricane Hunters are on there. Yeah, yeah. the Hurricane oh. Hunters are on there. So they actually have they actually have content. content. Oh, okay. Yes, they have actual produced Ooh. content. So that's and my brother was on that show. That's actually really? a smooth move because he can take that and make it a jumping off yes. point to other to platforms, have, to, uh, to other things. Mm-hmm. I mean, there you go. I mean, imagine if he would have owned the Weather Channel when Katrina happened. Mm. Man, you know, yes. I mean, a lot of the information would have gotten out. I would, I would just assume that. And Arson, you says, and no, we don't expect Obama to say, "I am for black people." But I could expect him to do to actually do something for us openly. Yeah, absolutely. And unapologetically. Mm-hmm. He should have done that, but for whatever reason he just didn't. And you know, and he even said as the article I was reading in um, his book, uh, Dreams from My Father, that he took he got uh, scrutinized a lot when he was the Harvard Review president yeah, the or president whatever. Of that, uh, Harvard 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 Harvard. Because yeah. he didn't really do um enough within the black community. So that's not it wasn't a secret to him. He didn't come mm-hmm. into the presidency knowing that was already a critique that he was right made. but he came into the presidency knowing what he was there for oh, yeah, he because knew. remember him him and hillary met in that hotel in baltimore right the, the secret meeting the secret meeting mm-hmm. and then al he says byron Al's, allen also had a show called comics unleashed where he gave a lot yes. of young comedians especially it still black, comes on late at night some exposure yeah. in a sit-down mm-hmm. setting okay now i did hear about that show mm-hmm. It's still see, still you say they have been hacked before because they refuse to sell out, but they're doing better now. Oh, membership has a cost and could give you a, uh, a say in helping to improve the website. Okay, I definitely have to check it out. So who hacked them? And Billy says she has a brand she needs uh, to complement it off of it. Who has that? And then Ralph says, I just think because he is half black and white, he was the only one that could possibly see it from both perspectives. He can't deny uh, neither side of his heritage. I'm just saying, no, he, he, I don't think he should deny his either side of his heritage, okay? But so you did a lot of stuff for the white side of you. Mm-hmm. But what about the black side of you? So, mm-hmm. so it, it, we're saying that he can't deny either. Can we at least say he uh, denied the black side? Trump came into office, immediately got Rich tax people cuts. are balling. Immediately. Rich people are balling. Unapologetically. Unapologetically. Bush came into office. We had a surplus. He gave Negroes $300 to get some uh, Air Jordan <laughs> and gave that surplus away that could have gone, instead of giving it away back to the people, mm-hmm. it could have gone to education program. It could have gone to uh, school right. vouchers. It could have gone to lunch programs. Right. They, they do their stuff and don't worry about the repercussions. Right. And Obama could have done that too. You were no, the he, president. Yeah, he wasn't going to do that. But yeah. we also know if he didn't do what he was told, he would be an assassinated president. Oh, Absolutely. And Joe Nelly says they've been um, window dressing with Obama. He is in the white nation. Pre- he's the white nation's president to sell us the illusion. But the reality is not even the white uh, slave slaver Trump. The reality is the Zionists that play all sides. Uh, let's see. And play all sides to benefit to the benefit of the wealth, like printing money, banking, economics, owning all, which we are all on allowances. No, absolutely. And then all oh, you say. So if neither party have your interest, why vote? Democrats are nothing but want to be Republicans. As long as we uh, participate, we are complicit in the religion of white supremacy. I absolutely agree. Would you like me to answer that? Yeah, go ahead. I will answer that. The reason why you should vote, mm-hmm. you cannot sit here and say that something with the Democrats.